everybody, welcome back to the channel. So before we start this video, please let me say this before you go into the comments and start hating. If you can adopt, then you should adopt. There are many dogs out there, pugs included, that do need adopted. So always look at adoption first. But there are many reasons why people won't adopt, don't want to adopt, can't adopt. We haven't adopted, but there are many reasons why not. And you shouldn't have to justify to anybody why you didn't adopt. And if you do adopt, like, you guys are absolute stars, but don't belittle people who do buy dogs. I'm sure everybody has a reason why they don't and nobody needs to know that reason. And there are many other ways to support dogs that do need adopting without actually having to adopt them. So since we've announced that we're getting Winston, we have had many, many, many requests to say, what do I look out for in a breeder? How do I go about purchasing a pug? Who do I get in touch with? What signs to look out for if it's a good pug, a bad pug, do you want this, do you want that? Like, we've had so many questions. So I thought I would just address it in one whole video and kind of just give you guys some tips and tricks when looking for breeders. First of all, if you are in the UK, then I highly recommend Vicky Usher. She is quite happy for us to share her information, so I'll put a Facebook link down below in the description. This is the breeder we've used for Pablo. It's the breeder, obviously, we're using for Winston. And it's a breeder we'll probably use for the next six or seven pugs at least. So if you are after a top quality pug from a top quality breeder, then get in touch with her. She is one of the most helpful people you'll ever come across. And during this video, you'll understand why we've used her as a breeder and why we will continue to use her as a breeder. Because you're a perfect little pug. There are a few things people get really caught up on that you shouldn't get caught up on. And these are the price and the reason for the sale. Now people would say these are two things to look out for. These are two things not to look out for. The reason why they're selling them doesn't matter, it's who's selling them, that's the problem. If somebody says they're selling them because their pug accidentally got pregnant, that's a legit enough reason to sell them. Now, if that person has lied, that's the issue, not the reasoning, it's the it's the reason that they've lied. Now, you can, I'll go into the people in more detail la 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 later on, but don't let the reason for sale put you off, and also the price. Now, people get put off by low prices, people get put off by high prices. Looking at pug prices, here in the UK specifically, pugs normally sit kind of anywhere between like 1,000 to 1,500, that's when we looked especially, we haven't looked in a long time, but that's when we looked. So if there is a pug up for sale for 300 pound, that does not mean it's bad quality or, you know, it's a bad pug. That might just genuinely be someone wanting to get rid of the dog to a good home and not bothered about the price, which is better than people who are bothered about the price. Just because a pug's up for sale for 3,000 pounds doesn't mean it's three times the dog he is. He was a 1,000 pound, by the way. That might be someone who's definitely in it for the cash and doesn't care. So don't let the price fool you. The person selling the pug is the most important part of looking for a pug, like the breeders, breeders. So we can only really talk from our experience, but it also depends on why you're buying a pug. Are you buying a pug for a family pet? Are you buying a pug because you want to do some shows with it? Are you buying a pug with the intention of wanting to become a breed? Like there are lots of reasons why you buy them. So you've got to take into consideration that and what comes with that. So we bought Pablo as a pet. He's not going to do shows. He's not going to breed. We're not going to do anything like that with him. We got Pablo as a pedigree KC registered dog. Now for the purposes we use him for, that really doesn't matter. We're not going to use him for shows. We're not going to stud him out. It doesn't matter if he's KC registered doesn't matter if he's pedigree but for health reasons and all stuff like that obviously this is a better quality pug as such he's came from a line of pugs that haven't had health issues and a lot of the times you do pay for quality but that's not necessarily 100 percent true in all cases now then if somebody is telling you that they are pedigree casey registered and everything like that then they should be able to provide you something like this. So this is actually Winston's pedigree certificate. Now look at the history on that. If a dog is pedigree Casey registered then a breeder should not be hesitant about giving you anything like that. If you request it they should be able to give you that like that. If they're telling you it is pedigree but they can't produce one of them certificates then be very wary because you should be able to produce that whenever we can go back and we can go get Pablo's off the internet. Like there is an actual trace and you'll be able to see all of the parents, all the parents, 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 and parents. It goes on. So let's get on to the actual breeders now. Now if you're looking at a breeder you want to do some sort of background check on them. Whether that's they've got Facebook and just going back through their Facebook and seeing what they've done before. Because if they're saying it's an accidental pregnancy and you look 10 months back and they've got another litter of pugs, then these aren't accidental. They're just trying to get cash in hand, extra money. Probably not too bothered about them. Whereas if I quickly show you Vicky's Facebook page here and go back through all of her history and just you can just see there is just dogs, 
dogs, dogs, dogs, more dogs, dogs, more dogs, litters, dog. She lives for dogs. This isn't a person trying to just make a quick bit of money. This is someone who cares about dogs. Is an actual business. So obviously after we found her and looked through her Facebook and stuff like that, we kind of knew that obviously she was a business, but looking at the comments on the pictures, people were tagging her in their pugs that were like three year old. She was asking how they were getting on, are they okay? So she cared about the pugs after they'd been sold. Now we knew then and there that was the breeder we wanted to go with. She obviously cared about the dogs and not just up until they were eight weeks and gone, she cared about them dogs long after they had been sold. And when you've contacted a breeder, they'll obviously conduct their kind of background check of you. Now, if they don't do a background check on you of any sorts, then they probably don't care where that pug is going. They won't care what home that kind of pug's going into. If they don't ask you questions about your living arrangements, what you plan on doing, what your work life is, or anything like that. They just want that money and that pug gone and they don't really care what happens to it. For all they know, it could be locked in a flat all day. You could work 12 hours a day and that thing's just gonna be by itself all alone. And if they don't care, then I don't you should really be purchasing a pug from somebody like that. We know for a fact that Vicky did do a background check on us because we're similar ages to her kids so they'd ask them if they knew anything about us or knew who we were. One of her son's girlfriends was friends with Chelsea's sister whose older sister is friends with Chelsea so there was like a connection we did actually kind of know them or they knew of us they knew about us they all had like friends on Facebook so they could go through and look at our actual lives. So we know for a fact that she investigated us like that, but I think if she didn't know, she would have then investigated further and actually asked us genuine questions about our life and all stuff like this. So again, from that we know, <laughs> so from that we know she was looking for a good home for these dogs. She didn't just want them dogs to go to anybody or first come first serve. It was who was best suitable for her litters. Now I'll cover this one really quickly, but pictures. Now if they can't supply pictures of their dog or they only supply one, they'll just keep sending you the same one and you can't get regular up-to-date pictures of them just keep asking for them just say oh have you got any like new photos of them all stuff like this if they can't give you them photos i mean how easy is it to take a photo there's one i could literally send anybody that to just picture of my light but i would be very cautious of people who can't take photos of dogs i mean it really isn't difficult that to me would suggest they're in a really poor environment and they don't want to show that to you now we get weekly pictures of winston we got weekly updates through text of when winston was being born because when we inquired about winston None of the pugs were even pregnant, but she kept us up to date, letting us know when they were going for the scans, if they were pregnant, if they weren't, when the next one was, how many weeks it would be. Like, we were getting regular updates before this dog was even born. And then once he was born, we were getting pictures weekly, not even sooner than that, like every couple of days. Generally, though, you can get a good vibe from a person when you talk to them of what kind of person they are very quickly. But breeders shouldn't be kind of hostile towards you. They should be very open, honest, any question you ask them should be able to answer and that goes nicely into this section of finding out what they know about pugs. Now we were searching for a breeder for quite a while. We were researching about pugs for quite a while, finding out, you know, all about them, you know, what we need to know, the breathing issues, everything like that. So we had a good bit of information we kind of already knew before going into buying one. If they are a pug owner, if they are a breeder, they should know everything there is to know about pugs. Obviously people learn stuff over time, we're still learning stuff now, but the general stuff they should know about, like your very basic kind of information. Now, we researched about pugs long before we were looking at actually getting one, just to kind of see if they were going to be right for us. So there's a lot of information you already know. Now, I would question the breeders with that information. Ask them questions you know the answers to, because if they can't give you the answer, or give you the wrong answer, they don't know anything about pugs, and they're just breeding for the money. So we asked her very specific, unique questions, which she answered like that. Like she just replied straight away with the answer and we could went to Google it later on, all perfectly fine. She she, know, she knows what she's talking about. So this is more an after sale thing, but after we bought Pablo, we were messaging her with questions. Oh, what, what can we do about this? So Pablo's doing this, is this normal? And she would reply to them. She wouldn't just be like, oh, I've got my money now, go away. She was replying to them. She was happy to help out. Now, when we picked up Pablo, she gave us this. Now this is basically a pack of information all about pugs. So as you can see, there is just so many documents here. There's like equipment you should have for puppies, exercise, grooming, dietary guidelines. That's our receipt, information on brachycephalic breeds, environment, toilet training, socialization, help with microchipping, vaccinations. And then she gave us some photos of Pablo's mom and dad so we could keep them and have them handy. She also gave us a bag of food, of the food that they were currently being fed on so that we could continue feeding him on that or use it to wean him off it rather than just giving us our own. So 
like so yeah she was not letting us take a dog without us knowing what we were doing now all the information we've gave you over the past like two years has basically all came from them sheets that's all the stuff we learned mom and dad now you should be able to at least see mom mom should be with the puppies till they are eight weeks old you should go and see them puppies before then like we go and see winston at three weeks we've seen pablo at three weeks and you should be able to see mum. Mum should always be there. I know Vicky's had issues before where mums haven't wanted to be mothers to the babies and have like rejected their own babies. But being in the environment she's in, she does have a lot of pets, a lot of pugs that have been mothers, so she kind of substitutes them in. But she would still be able to show you the mother the mother should be there to see. And in Pablo's case and in Winston's case, the dad was also there because all of Vicky's pugs and other dogs that she breeds are her own family pets. They are pets. And even if she does bring a stud in, She'll be able to backtrace that stud. She gets studs off people who, like her, have bred before. So you'll be able to get a full history of their pug. You'll be able to get contact information for them. If you can't get any kind of information for the dad and just the mum, then who's the dad? If it's an accidental pregnancy, you also want to be careful because you don't actually know what it is. But if it's being studded, then the stud should have a background information. He should have his pedigree certificates. Just like we showed you before, you should be able to get this off the breeder of the dad because they'd have to accredit it as well now the payment now obviously price is important in all this you know they are a lot of money but when we were talking to vicky originally obviously she advertised them at the price when we were talking to her and asking all these questions never once did she mention the price of them never once did we actually ever ask it was only after a long couple of messages where we decided we wanted pablo and we wanted to reserve one we wanted a form boy this is what we wanted and then we went to see him at three weeks she said if you could bring a deposit then that would be great but she didn't want all the money she didn't want all the money up front when we paid for winston we went to give her the money she said it doesn't matter just give us a deposit you can give us all of that when you pick him up but we weren't bothered we knew we were gonna go and get him so we just gave her the money then but she wasn't wanting to take the money off us if someone's asking for a deposit <laughs> Obviously in some situations you might not be able to go see the puppies and they'll want some kind of shh. Breeders should be able to reserve the dogs for you without any money. Obviously at some point they will need that money like it's not you can't just not pay at all. If you can't see them at all at any point then they'll want a financial deposit because at the end of the day if they get a dog that's eight weeks and then you just say no I don't want it. It's a lot harder for them then to try and sell that pug. And obviously the older it gets the harder it gets but if they're demanding full money off you before it comes to the end of that eight weeks then they're just all they care about is getting that money and that dog going whereas i know for a fact if people pull out of deals with vicky she will try to resell them and if they don't sell they just become a family pet she just gains a pet out of it and she's not bothered she'll have another one whereas for some breeders they 100 percent have to be gone like they cannot have them in the house and it's a worry so yes this is probably another long talky video but honestly i can't compress all of this into everybody's comment who asks it's too much information to kind of get across in one comment but i hope this helps you out and if you're going to look for a pug then hopefully you can use this information to try and narrow breeders down and find the right one for you we're always here to ask questions also you can drop in the comments of the video other people will probably help you out as well and i will always try and reply to everybody's comments i am slow at replying but i will reply if you've got a genuine question i will try and reply to them as best as possible so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please do drop a like drop any comments you have down below if you see people have asked questions then help them out with answers as well you know we can all help each other here i'm sure people have put in the comments as well some stuff maybe i haven't covered or forgot to cover so go check it out and as always people peace out